Welcome back to another time of study. We want to thank each and every one for coming out tonight, as well as our Facebook friends for viewing in tonight as we study God's Word. We actually search the Scripture, break down the Scripture, and see how the Scripture applies to our life. Yeah. We continue to ask that you continue to join in with us as we lift up our sick and shut in uh, in, in, in prayer. Uh, remember, remember that prayer can change some things. The prayers of the righteous will bear as much. And then we want you to uh, join in with us come this fourth Sunday as we celebrate our verses. And we just wanna we just wanna love on them and thank them for the for the work that they do. And so we just thank God for all of that. Let's go into the word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to assemble with the saints just one more time. Yes, Lord. We truly thank you for touching us with a finger of love and allowing our eyes to spring open to a brand new day. Yes. And even during the course of the day, your, your grace and your mercy were so sufficient for many who struggle and the many who down have been lifted, many who who's, who's sick have been made better. And Father, we just give you the glory today. Yeah, we don't realize, Lord God, that if it had not been for you on our side, we really wouldn't be here today. Mercy, mercy, but because of your grace and your mercy, yeah. Lord God, are covering us and keeping us in your yeah. divine keeping care, we again, we're here again tonight. We lift up prayer for all of our sick and shut yes. Lord God, and those whose head are bowed in bereavement tonight. Man. Father, there's so many that we know, Lord God, and we just can't name them all, but you yeah. know who they are, Lord God, and what they stand in the need of. Again tonight, Lord God, we ask that your anointing will fall fresh on all of us. Yes. Open our ears and our hearts so that we be receptive to your word. And allow your word, Lord God, to fall fresh in our hearts so we can apply your word to our life tonight. We love you. We thank you for your divine grace and mercy that have covered us all of our lives. And Father, when it's all said and done, we pray that you would get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We say good evening to each and every one. Uh, tonight we're going to go a little bit further with our conversation that we had this past Sunday in our Sunday session this past Sunday. And it was about believers not believing all of the word of God that's written in the Bible. And we, we really had a, a good discussion about that Sunday. Amen. And so what I want to do, I want to teach from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. Amen. But we're only going to read verses 18 down to 22. So she verses 22. And, and we'll, we're going to stop at uh, tonight. My, my study will end at verse 25, and we'll pick that up, finish that up on next Wednesday from verses 25 down to verse 32. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to verse 22. And those that are viewing us by Facebook, I want you to read along and, and listen to the words. If you can read it, listen to the words that has been said, uh, that has been written to the to the Gentile church in Rome. In Rome. Amen. Amen. You'll find these words, starting with the 18th verse. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men to hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power yeah. and God is, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, 
and their foolish heart was darkened. The last verse that we're going to read tonight. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Amen. And it's getting better as you read it on. Amen. Amen. And we're going to talk about tonight and the, the wrath of God revealed. The wrath of God revealed. Of course, we know the word wrath means it's anger. Right? It's anger is being revealed. It is being revealed consistently towards the unrighteous and the ungodly. It is, it, 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 we don't have to uh, take upon ourselves to act upon it. His wealth is being revealed according to his word to the ungodly and the unrighteous. Amen? So, so what we must understand about Paul's letter is that the warning that we read, that have read to the Christian in Rome is not of a future revelation of judgment concerning the great tribulation, but this is a present revelation of God's anger against those who know the truth but deny the truth of God. Let me back it up and, and say it again so that we can get it straight because our conversation was about those who believe, I mean, the believers not believing all of the word of God written in the Bible. In other words, they was picking, according to the conversation we had, they was picking and choosing verses of scripture that they can use. Right? And, and so a lot of them, they do that a lot. Teach Preachers sometimes do that. They, they would pull scripture out, right? And use scriptures and not use the scripture that's above and beneath, below. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So it's a it's a thing that has been done it's, and it's still been done even today. But the wrath of God is being revealed according to Paul's writings to the ungodly and to the unrighteous. Right? Right. Okay? Now it, it's it's Basically, our concern is that how can a person read God's word, right, and not a person who believes in God and, and read God's word and, and not take God's word as face value, right? So, and, and that's kind of be that can be kind of upsetting for someone who walks around. Sharing with others about they are, they are Christian, they are a believer, but when it comes to the the things written in the, in the Word of God that God that God uh, do not like, that God shares with us not to do, and they do it in the way. And then the key message, yeah, you got to get the key message right, right. So 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 in other words, I think one of the statements that I made. And I made a statement about homosexuality. A believer who, who reads the word and he sees the word in scripture where it says homosexuality is an abomination to God. Right? But yet he, they, they, they dabble in homosexuality and feel comfortable with that. Right? They deny the truth. You see? They deny the truth. Right? And they're going about doing what they want to do. Right? Amen. 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 So let me first back up and say this about the book of Romans. See, the Romans is called the constitution of Christianity. Because it's the doctrine of Christianity. The, 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 the writings of Paul was written to the uh, to the church, and the church was primarily made up of Gentiles. So they didn't have apostles and preachers to, to come along and to continue to teach them the ways of Christianity. And so Paul's letter 
the doctrine of Christianity was written to the Rome, the Christians in Rome, so they can have some type of foundation, some type of fundamental basis about Christianity. And sometimes we miss the fundamental basics of Christianity once we give our life to Christ. You see? See, Christianity is, 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 is a lifestyle that we live. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you can't pick and choose whether or not you're going to be a Christian or not. Because once you give your life to Christ, you are now in Christ. And Christ in you. And so you live that life. You're a follower of Jesus Christ. Just like the disciples was a follower, a learner of Jesus Christ. Wherever Jesus went, they followed Jesus. They heed the words that Jesus was teaching. And, and Jesus was instructing his disciples as he went along the different regions, right? Teaching them because he knew that once he leaves earth and ascends back to his father, they had the they had the responsibility to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So and so so we have a responsibility to carry the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So when you say you know you know you know we know God hates sin. Yeah. And then when you turn around and say it's an abomination, what more would it be? You know, if you just say sin, you know, it's the only thing that has to sin. But when you say a farmer hates it, what does that do? He hates it. He hates it. It's a bad taste in his mouth. He just can't stand it. But that's that's sin all together, though, right? Well, lying is sin. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> he don't look at any any other sin differently, but he puts the he puts this homework stamp on homosexuality, murder, and other things. It's, it's abomination to him. See, you, you follow what I'm saying? And I think when you, when, if they read, when they read the word, the abomination to him, that should be a sign for them to abstain from it, because it, it sh it's, it's sharing with them that it's something so distasteful to God that he can't even look at it. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So, but for a person to read what God dislikes, and then you you dabble in it anyway, you deny the truth. And, and, and it's all the more that that's really now to let you know he is really distasteful if he destroyed a sin yeah. because of homosexuality. Well, yeah, it, yeah, there was there was more there was bestiality going on yeah. in, in, in Sodom, yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah. They're two different places. Right, he destroyed both of them. Right? Yes, he destroyed both of them. Yeah. So, so he he destroyed them. He wiped them off the face of the earth. Pastor, uh, I'd like to make a comment uh, when you talk about uh, homosexuality and this abomination of God. I think what people are really doing is they're taking what he created. He created man and woman. He created man and woman to be with each other, and they they turned it upside down. Yeah. And that, like you said, that really gets next to him. Yeah. And that bestiality and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's big old. And, and Paul actually addressed that. We we'll address that on the next on the next the the the, the second part of it. That one, I'm going to stop with verse 25. I don't believe I'm going to get there. Right. Let, let me get into the verse real quick. Let, let's read verse 18. He said, notice what Paul said in verse 18. He said, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, from heaven, revealed from heaven, right? Yeah. It's something he's going to do. Right. Revealed from heaven against all ungodliness right. and unrighteousness of men. Now, remember, remember this now. This is very key. The Bible is written in the masculine tense. So he uses he, he uses men, man, throughout the Bible. When you see the word man, he's talking about humanity, mankind. So it's just not, it's just not talking about one particular gender. Right? It's mankind. Right? 
It's a, it, 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 you, it, we can see what makes God angry. It's because some have substituted the truth about God with fantasy of their own imagination. You see? So ungodliness is simply mean a lack of reverence for God. Being unrighteous referred to unjust action between people. And what Paul is saying about these two groups of people is that they suppress the truth naturally in order to support their own self-centered lifestyle. And that's what we see happening in our world today. Go ahead. So how do God look down on people that doesn't indulge in it, but they accept it because it's they loved ones or friends? But they don't you know what I'm saying? They not. No, he didn't. He didn't say cast them. He didn't. He didn't say for us. We gotta love one. He's telling yeah, us yeah, we gotta yeah, still yeah, love them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's still for us to love them. You can't condemn them. Right. Right. The word of God is condemning them, but you can't. But you know. Them. But you know if 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 you accept it and keep and love them and let them know love, they think that you for what they do. They could do and they, they continue to do it because they 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 figure well my mom and daddy they pleased with it yeah. because they would they would say so yeah. Yeah. you know and, and it doesn't help them. you know because you got to be told it's wrong I mean if, sometimes if you tell a person enough times it's wrong they may change yeah they may you know, I don't know I, I think may. you're on to something yeah. you're on to something because it, it, uh, I've got a niece in California. Who, who married a girl. Okay. She's still my niece. Right, right. But she know where I stand with yeah, that. Right, right. Yeah. But does that cause a conflict with your relationship? No. It doesn't? She know where I stand. You know, and when she comes around me or comes around me, she, she know where I stand. Right. She's still my niece. I can't cut her off as being my niece. Yeah. But she, she knows what her, where her uncle's at. When it comes to same sex marriage. Right. We still have we still have to love, them, but we don't have to condone what they're doing. Right? Yeah. We don't have to agree with it. But it but it but if you love a person and you see them doing wrong, it hurts your heart to see them doing it does, wrong. It, it, it does, it hurts you. You know, it, it hurts. Yeah. Especially it hurts. if it's your child or sister or kid on it. Hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It really yeah. hurts. Yeah. And we can even speak against it, but we can't be Judgmental. Yeah, right. I understand that. I understand you. God, God does judge. Right, right. Yeah, I'm just saying then, you know, the heart, the hurt for a man that we have to go through yeah. the hurt. It hurts the parent. Yeah, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it hurts. And like uh, that's what I was talking about, abomination. You can tell them that and let them know that if they don't change their life, what they going? Well, they're they not know. judging them. You just tell them what the Bible says. Yeah, say. what God says. Yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's 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 go get on down because you're hitting on me. Okay, you get up to in the in the ballpark. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> go ahead and leave. Uh, notice com the confirmation Paul gives in verse 19. He says, "Because, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. They know. They was aware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, they they was aware." The activities and the behavior that they was indulged in, they was aware that God was totally against. You know, there was a time when they tried to hide it from the right. outside yeah. world. Now they seem like they don't care. Mm -hmm. you you know, know, it's all out in the open. But there was a time they tried to hide that they were like. They were shameful. Yeah. yeah. And they knew it was wrong. They knew it was wrong. They knew it was wrong then. Yeah. That's what the Bible yeah. says. Yeah. Some of them don't care no more. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. You see, creation know about God. Yeah. And people, you have atheists who said there is no God, but even atheists know, believe somewhere there's, there's a God. Yeah. They either identify him as a higher power. Right, right. Or someone upstairs. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the Bible says it's already been revealed by God. Right. And what, what we must understand, humanity did never discover God. They didn't discover God revealed himself to man. Amen. Or mankind. Amen. You see. I sing a song, I'm glad I found him. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it actually that song is not incorrect. Yeah. Right, right. Any 
Because God would never lost. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, I, well, I can say I, I became aware of who he was, you know, and that come from from Sunday school teachers. It's come from my parents planting seeds, you know, in my yeah. life, yeah. seeing others, life, life change, yeah. and actually see God moving in other people's lives. God revealed himself to humanity. He revealed himself in, in, in the beginning, in the beginning, if you, if you go back to the beginning, look at the relationship that Adam had with God in the beginning. Yeah. He had no worries about anything in the beginning. And even after Adam had sinned, God came walking again in the cool of the evening. And what Adam does, he, he knows he go hide himself yeah. from God. Yeah, he, he tears fig leaves off and, and cover himself because the moment that he ate from the forbidden tree, right? The, 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 he, he, his eyes became open. You see, they were no longer pure. They was aware of their nakedness. The moment that he seen, yeah, he, when he went against God, went against God, yeah. So, so, so God has always revealed Himself to to us. And then again, look what He says again. Look what He says in nineteen. He says to them, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. How has He shown? So when you read scripture, if you follow scripture, scripture will, will, will share with you the answer. Amen. When you read scripture, scripture will always reveal itself in scripture. Look what verse 20 says. For, in, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly the same. Amen. What do you really, what do you see? You, you saw Rain, moon, star, birds, the wind. Yeah, you can't really see the wind, but you, you see the you see the trees. Yeah, you, can you can feel it. You can feel it. Right. You can feel it. You the season, the changes change of the season. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's consistent. Yeah. There's no there's no change in it. Right. It's air, very consistent. The air we breathe, we didn't go. The God that built us no air, we don't need it. No breathe, no air, no need <laughs> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. And then where he placed the world in the solar system, if we, we if we were too close to the sun, we would burn up. If we were too far from it, we would freeze. Yeah. So he put us perfectly in a system, solar system, where we could live and survive. Man, you you know what I'm talking about. You know, God, God, create, God, God creation yeah. was a miracle. It was a blessing. So, Certain, certain parts of the United States. Yeah. 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 Global, global food and stuff. And the cattle and stuff are dying out. God's still ruling this world. Yes, he is. Yeah, yes, Amen. So, uh, when you get, you get to the point where you, you, you're more thankful now. You're more grateful for the things that, that God allows or gives to us. We don't take advantage of it anymore. I think the older we get, if I can get a witness, the older we get, we take a, we, we're more appreciative of waking up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Amen. 
Yeah. Rather than jumping up, just going about our business, yeah. then we, you know, we take time to thank God for it. You know, we, we in that position, but I remember when I was young, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom and dad, they was Christian all their life, but it seemed like the older they got, they were trying to to do better. And I say they trying to get to heaven. Yeah. And so I find myself doing the same thing. Yeah. Knowing it may be my last day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So so his eternal power and divine nature have been seen in the visible, the invisible qualities of creation. What? I got a, one scripture I want to look at. That's in Psalms chapter 19. Don't read you do we got up there. I know what I do. Well, what I just like to do okay, it. go ahead. That's all right. All right. I might get out of the teeth. I don't want you to lose the thought. I don't want you to hear it. I'm from the thought of it, bro. Look what he says. He said the heaven declares what? The glory of God. And the prayer of the show what is saying. So when you look up, this is what you should see. You see. It is just showing us God. Right. His handiwork. Verse 2, day unto day, ugly speech, and night unto night show knowledge. The, the firmness, the stars. There is no speech, no language where their voice is not what? There's nowhere in this whole universe that, that they cannot see the glory of God. Nowhere in the universe. Was that my last one? The lion has gone out through all the earth and, the, and their words to the end of the world. In them had he set a tabernacle for the sun. Praise the Lord. That's God. Praise <laughs> the Lord. But man, man in, 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 his, in his ignorance think he has a hand in everything, but he does have a hand in that thing. All of that we see, we see the glory of God being manifested in the things that we see every day. Yeah. I like, I like this. When I see the clear blue sky, that never can change color. Yeah. <coughs> Lord, I want to be like, I want to be where you are. Mm. You just tell me that. Yeah, nothing. He said, and then uh, he said, for an invisible thing, go back to verse 20. He said, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are what? Without excuse. Without excuse. Mankind. So we can show come up with some excuses. Yeah, we can. We got an imagination. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's truly clear. It's, it's clear what Paul is writing to the church to try to get them to understand because the Judaizer is trying to get them to to not worship God, for, for them to continue to work, worship their pagan God. Right. They're Gentiles, and coming out from a Gentile nation, they, they have been worshiping idol gods. Right. They had a lot of them, didn't they? Yeah. Well, God for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, well in, in, in the writings of Paul, he, he kind of writes, uh, talks about how the Greeks actually worship things. The Greeks worship the sun gods, right. you know, the wheat, you know, different type of gods, right. you see, for them to feel comfortable about the things that are ongoing in the world. You know? And so when he's trying to get them to understand, he said, man will not be without an excuse. You, right. you see, you can be an atheist all you want to. All you, you can be an atheist up to the day you die. But you will not, you will not have an excuse when you stand before God. Amen. When, when I read that and, and began to search the scripture concerning that, he, he, God is saying, he, he gave Jesus Christ for the substitute death for us. Yeah. So, that, so that he died on the cross for sin. Amen. So, Amen. so we, won't have to, we won't have to suffer the wrath of God by, by it, living eternally in hell. That's love, man. Yeah, love. Yeah. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's right. Man will not be without excuse. Praise the Lord. 
Jesus did the hard part. Yeah. yeah. So when, when so when some raise the question concerning those who read the word of God and pick and choose certain passages of scripture to obey, they actually are refu refusing to accept the whole sovereignty of God. A believer is refusing to accept the whole sovereignty of God. Because from Genesis to Revelation, it's this whole unerring word. Amen. 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 So when the wrath of God is revealed to them, amen, and, 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 and they would not have an excuse because they refuse to accept. The, the, the word of God. First. And there are some there is a passage of scripture down through the years that I've read. You see what I'm saying? And and I and I said that didn't apply to me, but it did apply to me. That's right. Because when you read the word of God, you can't put nobody else in the pages of the Bible, you have to put yourself. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because it is a it is a it's a book of life. Let's look at verse 22. 21, I'm sorry. Verse 21. He tells us why the wrath of God. He said, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. They are aware of him. They have knowledge of him. But they refuse to worship him. They refuse to glorify him. They refuse to thank him. That's selfish, isn't it? We have a lot of selfish people living in this world. Very selfish and foolish. You're absolutely right. A lot of selfish Christians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only not only Christians, but we got unbelievers as well. well, well you know, selfish. Unbelievers wouldn't think that because they're unbelievers, but church Lord, Christians, people that have accepted Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior, you know, you would feel think they would be yeah. you know, grateful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't. I don't disagree with you. I just want them all. I just want the the, the entire creation. And then, because you have to. I mean, you have to thank God for your life. Yeah. Thank God for your parents. You yeah. see, even though you people have been a lot of kids have been abused, right? And 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 it's still it's a mark. On their mind, you know, because of the, the abuse that they had undergo as a child. But God, God's still bringing them through. Can you can you say you're grateful if you get up and say, I get up and I pray every day, I, I go to bed and I pray? Is that grateful? Is that grateful? Yeah. If you pray every day? Yeah. yeah you, you're thanking them, you're praying to them. Uh, it, now, this. Praying is too facet, right? You you either pray for something, right? Right. Or or you you just pray, or you praying and thanking him. Thanking the Lord, yeah. Acknowledging him. It's a good. It's a mixture of two. When you pray, so so you know if it's the end of the day, you thank him for bringing me through the day. Please forgive me, Lord, for the things I've said today. Right. See, that's what mom taught us before we got in bed, right? Lord, lay me down to sleep. You should want to say your prayer. <laughs> right? Is that, if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to say. And when you wake up, you thank you for, thank for another day. Pray for right. you eat. They, 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 they also should reflect on the way that I live. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If I'm grateful, you know, I can, I can utter words of gratefulness, but that's only part of it. You're yeah. showing in action. In action. In my action. Okay. That's what we were talking about earlier when we said, what was that we said before we started? Yeah. Us. yeah. Which, oh, how they who deal with their lips and not in their heart. They honor God with, with their lips, but their hearts are far from them. Yeah. yeah. Now, Paul is not describing a knowledge. Of God's saving power. He's talking about it, though. Talking about saving power. He's this acknowledgement that they knew that God exists. Yeah, right. But they refused to glorify God 
and to be thankful for God, for, for his existence. See, that's what that's that's the prime line that atheists cross over. See, they're not they not they're not gonna thank God for the food that they receive or for the accomplishments that they accomplish in the life. They all look to their own might, their own strength that accomplish the success that they have in the world. I think that uh man, man <clears throat> I'm talking about everybody, because they can't see God, they don't want to believe God, but they know of God, and they want something they can see, yeah. but they don't understand how God power and love is because God can use somebody to help you because you can't look at God. You can't we can't see him, his spirit. You understand? We can't see him. We did see him, we have to bow down. We could we couldn't look at him. And he uses people to get his work done. And I know I've had people help me and I know it wasn't nothing but God. Didn't even know me. Just come out of the blues and help me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Brother McCauley, over the years, I've been, we've been knowing each other since we were kids. Every time he see me, he would invite me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this went on for years. And I knew his heart was true, that I've seen him grow. And look where I'm sitting today. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you. You see, it's, we, you're right. We, we can't see him. But it's, God is seen in the visible thing. According to our scripture, right. right? But it's it's by faith. Yeah, it's by faith. But 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 man, being man, because he can't kick it around, he don't want to believe God is real. Because see, man wants to be in charge. Yeah, that's, that's and it's sad. True in the story. Yeah, yeah, it's sad because you put God, God, you got to put God first. God is the creator. But do they? But that, I, I, I'm, I don't want to be controversial with you and argue with you. But it's a fine line that you, you, you're you crossing when you say man, you know, man don't want to believe God because he can't see God again. I'm Remember thinking that. No, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying man got to be thinking something if he don't want to worship and believe in God. He got to just, be, because he's an unbeliever. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's an unbeliever. Like, see, we, we both, all of us was unbelievers at one point. Right, right. Somebody kept planting seeds. Right. We kept seeing something. We kept hearing something, and, and God, God stole water. Nobody comes. To, you, you understand? He's, we saved by grace. Praise right? the Lord. He, he, he snatched us. Amen. He, he pricked our hearts so that the word of God can, can, can get into our hearts. Amen. Amen. So the reality became the, the, the reality of us needing to be saved. Or to want to live with God became a reality. Whether it was through sickness or hardship or whatever, God used all of that to bring us to a, a reality point where we need God. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the scripture, the scripture said he draw all men. So, you know, even if it's not in sickness, just, if, even if you just come, it's because God draws you. Yeah, you yes. you came on your own. Yeah, you, you, you didn't save yourself. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But we work out our soul salvation. Go ahead. I want, I want to say something. Have, uh, black men show the commercial on TV. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. Okay. Black, black men were showing this commercial on TV. Yeah. Ron Raven's son. I forget his name. Uh, he was, I don't know how much they were paying him to make it. He said, I'm a, 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 a life, a live life. And I'm not afraid of burning in hell. I said, man, do you know what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not, it's not a place you're going to walk in and walk out. The, the Ron, Ron Raven's son said that. Is he still living? Pardon? Is he still living? I don't know because they took yeah. the commercial off TV. Well, um, well, it is, well, a lot of people uh -oh. went to their grave same way. Mm -hmm. But here's the scripture, here's the thing. The Bible says it's appointed once. For man to die, for mankind to die, yeah. then come judgment. He can say whatever he wants to say. He's got to stand before a holy God. Yeah. There's no excuse. I'm just wondering how much they, they, pay, they pay people to say things. I don't know if they pay people a lot of people. People spend a lot of money to say things. Yeah. 
around you. He might have been serious about that. Well, I, when he said it, he said, yeah. you, know, I, you know, I don't mind burning, uh, burning, burning this thing. Well, you know, that's was, just, that, that was his testimony. And maybe maybe God obliged him. They showed him something. God obliged him. So when he got that, down there, he said, oh, I'm going to take that back. That yeah. wouldn't be no different than you know, some uh, unbeliever, you know. I mean, same thing. If you don't believe in God, it's the same as the out of my burning in hell. But that's where you're going. Yeah. Our job is to convince them. Yes. It's, it's convince them, you know, they don't convince them that they don't want to go to hell. That God God loves them. You see. So we know that we know the plot, the plight of an unbeliever. But what is what is so disappointing is when we when we see those who confess hope in Christ turn the other way. Amen. After he have after God have brought them to so far for them to turn turn back from following God. That's one thing they they don't they just it's possible. It's possible. I mean I know I know we might think it's taken a lot better hard hearted as far as humanity is concerned. Mm -hmm. But what the word says on that day every knee can bow. Absolutely. Every tongue will confess. Don't have to, not saying they're going to confess to mankind. That's a good one. We're going to confess to him. That's a good one. That's a good one. And like I said, you know, at that time, I feel like the unbeliever are the ones that made the mistake. You know, it's going to be too late to make a game. That's a good one. First, you, you, that was a good one. But every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Even Satan himself. Every tongue will confess. Every tongue will confess. Right? And heaven. And in earth. Amen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like that's a good one. There's an area that hard yeah. heart me yeah. hearing that in our ears. Yeah. But like I said, we're not going to make the judgment call on that. Yeah. 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 So, so when people refuse to glorify or thank God for all the many blessings that He has done for them, it's reasonable to say they are refusing to recognize yeah. the sovereign yeah. God. Yeah. Mercy. They they are they are trusting in their own might. They believe their accomplishment thus far has been because of their own doing. You know, uh, Pastor, once you said that, I thought about the rich man. Which and one? The rich man <laughs> and uh, treated Lazarus the way he did. Yeah. 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 He could have got to heaven if he had to just treat Lazarus nice. But yeah. when he got to that burning place, he wanted Lazarus yeah. to go back. He wanted him to dip his finger in. I said, this guy must have been out of his mind. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people need to read that when they're thinking like uh, Sister Shaw was talking a while ago because yeah. these people don't believe. Yeah. And you know, you have to come to an understanding that you believe everything in the Bible. You know, yeah. some people talking about this fantasy and all that, but I want to tell you something. I, uh, when I was a teenager, we sat right on that corner over there when we going back home. Uh, when you make that left turn, mm -hmm. maybe about four or five of us and uh, we wasn't doing nothing. We might do something wrong, but you know how our teenagers were. But there was a guy that stayed up on the hill, up on this hill in Washington Hill. Mm -hmm. And every time he come by there, he would stop, and he wasn't talking to nobody but me. He said, what you don't know on this corner? Mm -hmm. Your daddy know you, see, he know my dad. I didn't know who he was, but you know, after I, got, I used to get mad at that guy for doing that. I said, he didn't say nothing to nobody else but me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that really, after I got older and got a better understanding, I realized that was God mm -hmm. trying to get me off that corner because we might be over there drinking beer or smoking or doing anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I thank God for that man so many times. I forgot his name and everything, but whoever he was, mm -hmm. I thank God for him because I remember when I, when I got out the wilderness, I remembered him. I said, that man tried his best to help me. I said, that couldn't be nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. God, God, God. And God I used to get God. mad at him. I said, I wish he'd leave me alone. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, you know, he, he did it so much. Sometimes the guy would say, hey, right, here come your boy when he stopped that. <laughs> and the guy was jugging. Yeah, yeah. they jugging that. All right. But that yeah. helped me. The guy know. had a discernment about you. Uh, not your life. He had a, some type of discernment. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I thought about it after yeah. I 
I got out of myself and I realized that guy was just after me. I said, it couldn't have been nobody but the Lord. Now, now, now watch, what, watch what happens. Let me get this verse in and okay. come back with your question. Let me get verse 20. Is it 21? 22. 22? You were on 21. I was on 21? Mm -hmm. Let me finish on. Let me do the, the B part. He said, became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. Right? And I, and I think that's what happens when the person rejects and pick and choose what they want to believe out of the battle, their imagination becomes more and more foolish, right? And they become, and their hearts become darkened because they they refuse to be, refuse to believe the sovereign God, the, the word of God. So when you pick and choose things out of the Bible that you want to believe and what you want to follow, your, you, 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 your imagination becomes uh, uh, darkened. You begin to do things on your own. And this is the way Paul described it. He said, then the wrath of God is seen in their life. In, 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 in how they begin to try to do things. Because they won't follow God, they are not successful. Doors are not opening. Life, their bodies are weak. Maybe some things are happening in their life that never happened in their life before. Right? And I'm talking about believers, not unbelievers, but believers. Who, who depart from following after Christ. You see, and if we're talking about the wrath of God, the wrath of God here is in the way that God have removed his gracious help towards those who has been following him. It's seen in verse 22. He says in verse 22, they professed themselves to be wise, they became what? Ooh. 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 You see? And so, so they think they're, they think they're wise, but they actually they are, they're fools. Right? So the wrath of God is seen in their life by how futile in the things they try to, to understand and they really don't understand. And, and everything and everything that uh, they try fails. And it seems as though the believers now follow more after the world than they, they do after Christ. Right. That even their conversation is more worldly than spiritual. Mm -hmm. They have they have uh, left the church and don't worship anymore. And, and, and they're giving. They're not giving. If they're not giving, they're not supporting their church, their local church anymore. They're about to sell, doing their own thing. And God's anger, God's wrath <coughs> is seen in how he, he have pulled his his, his, his gracious help away from them, where things was open for them and seemed easy for them to accomplish some things, now they're struggling trying to do some things. Maybe working double time, two jobs, just to try to make ends meet. Take a toll on the body. Yeah. Where a believer over here is worshiping God in, in their giving, in, in, in their tithing, and everything. And they only got one job, but God is making their ends meet. Yeah. 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 You, you follow what I'm saying? So, so God has a way of pulling his, his resources, his provision back from us, back from them who, who strive to walk contrary to the ways of Christ. Right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we, we don't really have to condemn them or try to do some things. Just watch them. And see what happens. You you can see you see they sprouting they two jobs and they ain't got time for God. Mercy. Their families are wrecked because they spend more time on the job Mercy. they do around their families. Mercy. Mercy. The children are running running crazy, doing everything. Sunday, and you think you got to be happy once the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. But now, I'm, 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 a believer. I'm, a, I'm really a believer in this. If, if you allow, if you share with your employer that you are a Christian, that you 
you know, you worship on Sunday, you want to be off on Sunday. I, I think he, he would take that under consideration. Yeah, yeah. Because he, they, they do the same thing for the seven day Right. Those who yeah, take off on Saturday. Yeah. Shut down. But if he know your position and, and you standing on your position, you know, he'll honor that. He'll take that out of consideration. But if you always volunteer for Sunday, <laughs> so he's just going to automatically put you down because you already always volunteer for Sunday. That's true. That's true. I know the money will look good. <laughs> triple time. I guess that's a triple time. <laughs> You know, you, you have to work it. But sometimes I, I, like when I had to work on Sunday, sometimes I just got to sit. I said, Lord, I just got to change. Get going to you. Know, yeah, that's good. It's good. So, so the same thing Paul had to deal with during his time. I think we we deal with those things today. Yeah. Right? Amen. People rather people rather uh, rather uh, claim things out of the Bible that they can apply to their lives so they feel comfortable with and won't feel guilty about what they do with instead of taking the whole word of God right and, 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 and what we're seeing today is that people sometimes those are people who are hesitant or skeptical about God's word you'll find that you, you, you'll find that they won't read the word they won't bring their Bible and their, and their attendance at church would probably drop off because they're afraid that one day the preacher is going to hit the very thing that they're accustomed to doing. They get mad. They'll get mad at the preacher if the preacher covered that in their sermon. They, they, they say he he's he's talking about me. <laughs> Looking at me. Yeah. 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 If you look very carefully at verse 23, you'll see what happens. When they pick and choose what they want to do, they change things. All right? And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the, an image made like corruptible men and the birds of full footed beasts and creeping things. They change it. God ain't sending nobody to hell. God too much of a loving God to send you to hell. You yourself, Can you send it yourself? <laughs> well, you know what? He's a loving God. Yeah. Because he's a loving God, he tells you yeah. how to get out of hell. Yeah, but they won't, they won't pay no attention. He made a way for you to escape there. That's right. He said, God is love. A so when I, he, if I'm loving, if I'm loving somebody, <laughs> see, if I choose to love uh, another man, if God is love, I'm doing exactly what God oh, ain't what he says. He ain't saying that. <laughs> you, you, follow, you feel what I'm saying? People taking, changing the glory of God, you're changing the truth to fit their own lifestyle so they feel comfortable, won't be ashamed of what they're doing. Right? they taking the uncorrupted God, ain't no corruption in God. Right? Until an image made like corrupt man. Pastor Money. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Pastor Money, there's got to be some shame. Look how long you stayed in the closet trying to hide it. Yeah. You got to be ashamed of something. <laughs> See, they, they need to know he made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> yeah. 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 The bottom line, the bottom line is that unbelief is a matter of rejection. No, that's it. It's a matter of reje rejection. It's a sin. It's a sin, yeah. yeah. And when they reject, it's easy. they won't just ease their own self-conscious. And when they're, when they're conscious, they get to that point, the Bible said their mind, they, their thoughts have been darkened. That's it. Amen. And that's uh, what they're doing is they, they not believe in God, but they believe in Satan. They believe in Satan. They're doing what Satan wants them to do. They divert to idolatry, creating yeah. images that cannot act nor see or judge. Yeah. This is what the Gentiles come out of that world. 
They was comfortable in their world. And when they came and been a part of Christianity, and Paul began to preach about idolatry, that you can't have no other God before for him, he's the only God, right? That went contrary to what they was raised with. So he, he writes this letter to the Christians that's in Rome to help them understand there's only one God. One God. You, you can't straddle the fence. Okay. Right? Try to, and he's trying to divert them from going back, making images. You see, and, and Israel was doing the same thing. They was going to the temple to pray, but they had the idol gods in their tents. Yeah, yeah. Sure <laughs> Whichever one worked for me, you know. So, 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 people are actually doing that today, right? They were they were drawn from God, and that, now they are a part of this world, this this modern world, this electronic world. Yeah, right? they don't give God a chance. They, they don't. Well, yeah, they yeah. don't give him a chance. Yeah, yeah. Working their life. We replace God's written word with electronic devices. Yeah. Social media have weakened personal communication between friends and family. Children somehow cannot function without a cell phone. The world has made technology the idol gods. Earth. Right? Humanity is dying for the next phone that comes out. <laughs> so, so, so we can, we can see how this world that we're living in, we know we're living in a modern society now. And some, and all of these devices it is, can help us, but we can't make these devices, we can't depend so solely on these devices. We don't remember telephone numbers anymore. All the ones I remember, I remember house number and that little Carol's number. Only one I remember is damn one one. That ain't the wood. Yeah, yeah. Again, look what it said. Change the glory of the uncorrupted God into the image made like corruptible man and creeping thing. Right? Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And he's really going to get into this next week, boy. Right? He, he's, he's pulled his graciousness, his gracious help from them. Right? He, 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 those who spawn him, those who refuse to accept him, he turned them over to their own desires. You know what? And that, that's also God showing love. You want to be unclean? You want to do this? You yeah. do it. God yeah. let you do what yeah. you want to do. Right there, we're talking about the saved or the unsaved. Both, man. Okay, okay. Anybody that both. don't want to do both. God's will, he'll let I, 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 we, and I say both because you understand, we, we under the, the uh, dispensation of grace. The whole world is under the dispensation of grace. You see, God's favor is on humanity today. Where back in the <coughs> biblical days, he opens the earth, right? He calls lightning to come down. He's, he just took people out. We under the dispensation of grace. So if, so if a person continue on to dabble in the certain un, unguided behavior, and when the warning kept coming to the person, you need to refrain from this thing, and they continue on dabbling in it, then the grace of God is pulled back off of them. His gracious help is pulled out. The binders are pulled out. That's right. They no longer have control over their bodies anymore. They no longer can stop doing what they're doing. Right? It's just like a person on drugs or alcohol. Right? They start out fine socially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. get addicted. And then after a while, they find themselves with a cat live without it. I was just thinking about that young man. We went to the funeral. Yeah. Now, would that be the client at the reprobate mind? Reprobate mind. He's talking about reprobate mind. Yeah. It's in the same scriptures. Yeah. And it's because I think you refusing to accept mm -hmm. God's yeah. grace and his love and 
all it is done, and you want to do it your way. Right. <clears throat> this is what, well, yes, absolutely. Let me, let me put it in context. Paul is saying to the church, he's saying, if you continue on doing what you're doing, not accepting God's word, right, refusing to, to comply to the, what God is saying, he said, he's going to give you up. Your father, he's going he to to your own selfish devices, right. the lust of your your mind, the uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. But you say, Pastor, because God knows he, he really knows what people going to do. Yeah, and he knows uh, he knows some of them ain't going to come back. They ain't going to come back to him. Right, and that's why he say, give them up to them clean, unclean. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you say you give give them up, what did you say? He, he pulled his gracious help from them where, where he gives us boundaries and he, he, he gets up to the point where our conscious mind begins to weigh heavy on us and things that we do. So when our mind becomes seared now, it no longer bothers us anymore. Right. You're still, you're still on the grace and mercy right there, but he just took his hand off and he let you have your weight. Just yeah, you know, just that you know, he's no longer restricting you, or no longer just the borders right. have been open. You just go on. Right. Yeah, I was just saying, you yeah. know, no longer is the Holy Spirit tapping on you no more. Right. There's no more refrain. Right. You know, refraining from them. Now you're so overwhelmed with the uncleanness, desires. All right. You go to great lengths. Now, now you even dishonor your own body. Right. <clears throat> you follow this. So it's it's one one degree to another, you see. And this is this is really it should be read and preached and taught through 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 the church every every year so that people can understand, you see, the, the, the detriment that they cause to themselves Amen. when they don't listen to God. You follow? And when they don't listen, when they don't listen, they don't listen to the preaching word. They, 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 they don't listen to what God is trying to tell them. Right? And so they get to that point now, there's no turning back now. Even to the to the front that we went down in, in the Stevenson, Alabama, the guy was in a rehabilitation clinic. Mm -hmm. He was seeking help. The parents were paying money for the man, for the young boy. Yeah. But the but the desire, the urge of the addiction was so strong, he come out of the clinic and, and, and got high. And that's the danger that our young people don't understand. It only take one time. One time. Because that fentanyl that they put in marijuana, cocaine, all it takes is one time. There's no recovery from it. If they get to you fast enough, they can save you. Most time, wherever you at, getting high, they are gonna pass. That's when you gonna die. I was gonna say that. I grew up in Egypt, but the We was, I, I think I, I, I kind of use myself as an example. I felt as if I wasn't hurting nobody. It's me. It's my money. I ain't hurting nobody. But, but it was hurting. It hurt my family. I was taken away from, 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 the, from the provision that God was providing for me for my family. Conversation that that I've been around, and I and I doubted when I was out there. It's God's herb. 
You see, that's I mean that was no you that's what I was saying. It's God heard me. The engine was smoking. Yeah, the engine was smoking. <laughs> I didn't see that thing. I didn't know what they were smoking. I mean, but but anything, listen, as a believer, anything that, that makes you uncontrollable, that, that distorts your mind, it ain't healthy for you. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. It, it, it can be healthy for you. Right? A, 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 little, a little wine a day or a drink a day, and your doctor says good for you and everything. Okay. But after a while, it's not going to be every day. But you're going to take the whole bottle. Remember <laughs> one time when, when out there, Carolyn bought me a case of beer. Because she was trying to make me stay home. Bought me a case of beer. I said, girl, you know you shouldn't buy me no case of beer. <laughs> I wouldn't do that then. <laughs> that didn't keep it on because once that, that last can was gone, I was out of the house. <laughs> right? But it, it only made my urge, my my drinking problem much worse because I had it. I had it all there. But I was good with a 40 ounce. Give me a 40 ounce, I'm cool. But you put a whole 12 pack. In front of me, I'm finna kill that whole twelve pack, <laughs> right? But it just didn't, it just didn't work right? because my addiction that I had was was overwhelming, and and I'm getting I'm glad God saved me from that. Yeah, praise the Lord. And see, there 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 are people who have who has gotten to that point where they are uncontrollable. They, the addiction is so high, even if they maybe it's clinical. They can go to a clinic and, and recover, but it's so strong they can't socialize with those who or who who, who do the drug. You gotta abstain from it. I felt fortunate that the Lord just saved me. Yeah, yeah. When I did, I started putting God's word in my heart. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Going to AA meeting, I kept I got tired of committing that I was a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you have something to say, yeah, I'm running a bull, I'm a drunk. I got tired of saying that. <laughs> I started going to church, put God's word in my heart. Amen. He wouldn't go. He wouldn't go. So his mama told him. He didn't want no help. Job. He didn't want no help. Right. His mama told him, he said, let it go. Yeah, because you got to want it. If you don't want it, you got to admit that you're an alcoholic. You got to admit that you're a drug addict. You got to admit it. And a lot of times they don't want to admit it. All right? I want to stop at verse 25. I want to read it, but I'm going to stop at verse 25 and pick it up next week. All right? We, we hit it. But again, he comes back and says, Similar to what he said before, who changed the truth of God, right? In the latter part, they they changed they changed God, the holy God, right, uh, right, the glory of God to a right. He said, who changed the truth of God into a lie. That's what's happening today, yeah. right? And worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, Mercy. who is blessed. Forever. Amen. Right? And he said, well, at the end, don't, don't miss the screw what he said. He's talking about God who's, who, who's blessed forever. Mm -hmm. he's talking about Jesus Christ who's blessed forever. Right? So, so but but you gotta understand, it, it's changing. He, he changed it from how they changed God, try to God into the image of wooden creatures, creeping things, beastly images. And he got this narrative from the Greeks and the Greeks done just that. They had sun gods. You remember when Moses went down right to the to the Nile? Right? And he pleaded for his children. 
And they and Moses turned the Nile red. And, and, and Pharaoh said, my, 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 my priest said they can do the same thing. Right? They can do the same thing. But, but, he, but they couldn't do what God had done to the Nile by turning the Nile to blood. They turned their, their, their cane, their, their rods into snakes. But God brought the snakes, swallowed their snakes up. It's right? And so when people are looking at the word of God and saying, making the word of God a lie. And God ain't, man, God is still in control. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is still in control. When we pick it up next week, really get into it because down in here he's talking about being fouled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness. He's talking about women loving women, men loving men. Indeed. Yeah. But he doesn't let them off the hook, Sister, Sister Shaw, because in the next verse, he, he says, you were subject to this thing too. Yeah. And what they were judging of was that you were to subject things too. So he, he tried to get us to understand we can't judge them. We know that God is against it. So that's why it's so prevalent that we share the word of God with them. Amen. God love you. You don't have to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So we'll pick it up next week. Amen. We, 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 hopefully we get through that next week. The 32th verse. We move pretty smartly tonight. Amen. Don't miss Ursus Day Sunday morning. We got Maurice Tony. He's going to be our keynote speaker. Uh, for a Sunday morning, Sunday Amen. school be viewed on YouTube channel at eight o'clock. Brother Kevin will be teaching. Then at nine thirty, right here, watching him back the church. We get right back into the Sunday school lesson. Amen. Hope we have another dynamic lesson. The input is so so, so paramount that because when you get feedback, you can just go on and teach. Praise the Lord. Right? Amen. And then go right into Sunday worship at ten thirty. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah, on Saturday. The, the Good Neighbors Inc. organization will be celebrating 70 years of, of community service right here in Washington Baptist Church. Pray for us if you can't be with us at, at 3 o'clock. Yeah, pray for us if you can't be here. Amen. We're, we're looking to have a high time, a glorious time as we celebrate those and honor those who give their service to the Good Neighbors Inc. organization. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, again for a dynamic way of teaching your word, how we break the word down, how we apply it to our life. We know, Lord God, that you are watching over this world. You're very concerned about the unbelievers as well as the believers. And Father, we, we pray that you should help us stay on the path. Lord God, we know that there's a narrow path and there's a broad path. And help us stay on that narrow path that leads to you, Lord God. We pray that you would divinely cover us if we travel back to our destination, and Father, when we meet back here again, we pray that we lift your son Jesus up, that he might be glorified and continue to draw all men to himself. Amen. Lord God, we pray that you continue to cover and keep all of our sins saved in your divine keeping care. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen.